ethers are the functional group when there's an oxygen in sort of the middle of two hydrocarbons. So the uh, classic uh, functional group symbol would be ROR, where these are two hydrocarbons. Remember, the R can be any hydrocarbon. Um, so this can be very simple as CH3O, CH3. And so, or it can be, you know, CH3, CH2, oxygen in the middle, CH2, CH3. These are normally um, named uh, by naming both sides as a function of what side chain or group they are. So this would be dimethyl ether. And this would be diethyl ether. So anytime you have an oxygen single bonded uh, to two carbons, sort of in the middle of a hydrocarbon, that is known as an ether. When you have a oxygen directly bonded to a carbonyl instead, that is actually called an ester. So an ester would take this shape, where you have a hydrocarbon bonded to an oxygen. That is bonded to a carbonyl. And then that can be uh, bonded to another hydrocarbon, okay? And so that is an ester. And of course they can take on any shape. And if we were to draw them as um, skeletal functions, that's how they would, ha the skeletal uh, formulas, this is how they would look like. Where you have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then an oxygen in the middle. And then you have whatever hydrocarbons you have on the side. Um, esters are actually uh, very common in um, biological samples, including uh, fruits and vegetables. And um, they often have a very um, pleasant smell. So if you think of the banana smell, that's actually an ester, a molecule that has this functional group. All right, so let's start talking about um, other uh, elements that can be bonded to carbon. And uh, one that's just going to talk about one is called a thiol. And so this is um, when uh, sulfur is bonded to a carbon. A sulfur hydrogen group is bonded to carbon. And so this would take on the shape. It's pretty much exactly like an alcohol group. And so C bonded to an S bonded to an H. And of course, uh, since sulfur is in the same group as oxygen, it can take on uh, the same sort of bonding mechanism, two bonds and then um, two lone pairs. Okay. And so you can have this anywhere on a hydrocarbon and you would draw it just like you drew uh, the OH group, you definitely draw the S and then the H that's connected to it. And you would name it in a very similar uh, fashion. So this would be one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's um, hexane thiol. Okay, so the next two functional groups are going to contain nitrogen atoms. And these are amines and amides. Now an amine is when a nitrogen is connected to a hydrocarbon. And so uh, we know that uh, nitrogen is going to have three bonds. And so it's connected to a carbon. And only one carbon is also going to be connected to two hydrogens. Okay. And so an example of this would be CH3 and H2 uh, methylamine. All right. Or we can actually, uh, instead of connected to this uh, hydrogen right here, it can be connected to another hydrocarbon. So R, N, R, some other hydrocarbon, and then only one hydrogen. Okay. And so, of course, we can say dimethylamine. So CH3 and H. CH3 would be the uh, reduced uh, formula, or we can draw this as NH. 
And of course, uh, nitrogen can also uh, bond to another uh, hydrocarbon instead of bonding to that hydrogen. So it can be bonded to three different hydrocarbon groups. And I keep on putting these primes here just to indicate that they can be different. They don't have to be the same. And so we could have a scenario where uh, nitrogen is bonded to a 1, 2, 3 propyl group, an ethyl group, and a methyl group. And in this scenario, it's bonded to three hydrocarbons and no hydrogens. When um, nitrogen, when amine is bonded to just one carbon, it's called a primary amine, and you can symbolize that as just one degree, a primary amine. Uh, if nitrogen is bonded to two hydrocarbons, or two carbons, and which can be hydrocarbons, we would call that a secondary amine. And then, of course, if it's bonded to three different carbons, or three hydrocarbons, it would be a tertiary amine. And amines are going to become very um, important when we talk about proteins, um, as they are a very important part of amine, no acids in proteins. All right, and then just as important in uh, uh, proteins are also amides. That's how amino acids link up. And so an amide is when nitrogen is bonded to a carbon. And it could be any hydrocarbon. So I probably should write just an R group. And also bonded to a carbon that is has a carbonyl group on it. All right, so C double bonded to an oxygen that's also bonded to a nitrogen, that's an amide. All right, and this can take off, this can take on any shape. All right, so R bonded to a nitrogen, bonded to a carbonyl, and this can be R, that can actually be a hydrogen like that, or a hydrocarbon. And so uh, when nitrogen is just bonded to a carbon, it's an amine. When it's bonded to a carbon and a carbonyl, it is an amide.